Welcome to Cattle Chat Corner here at the 2013 Cattle Industry Convention with uh, Allison Van Enenam from the University of California Davis, Extension Specialist, and you, you've been looking at genomes. What are these little bugs that we have to keep track of? <laughs> no, actually, we're talking about the DNA that makes up animals, and uh, we're actually working on a number of different projects where we're trying to identify uh, the DNA variants in cattle that are associated with traits of economic importance to the beef industry. And specifically, we're looking at the traits of uh, feed efficiency, uh, resistance to bovine respiratory disease, and fertility which are all really economically important traits that we don't have very good selection criteria available at the current time and we're hoping that we can harness the genomics revolution to help identify cattle that are superior with regards to these very important economic traits. So just as a basic nutshell we've been evaluating things like performance growth and we've started to look at feed efficiency feed consumption but now we're looking at the genetic potential and that's what we're talking about with the genome itself. That's right, yeah. So traditional breeding has, has really worked on traits that we have good measurements for. So weaning weight, for example, we can measure quite well. They have high heritability and we can make good genetic progress in the direction that we want to do. We haven't had very good measurements available for some of these more important economically relevant traits like feed efficiency and they're quite expensive to get measurements on. And so the hope is we can identify genetic markers that are associated with these traits that would allow you to do a DNA test on animals and start to get some sort of an idea of the genetic merit of the animals for those particular traits. These are what geneticists have long called low heritability traits. So is there a chance that this is not going to work? Well, the low heritability traits are the ones that we have a hard time making genetic improvement on, in part because there's a lot of environmental noise in the background. And so is an animal performing better because it had a better environment or because it's genetically superior? And so in order to address that problem, we've had to put together very large training populations, they're called, and do very um, precise phenotyping to make sure we're actually picked picking animals that are in fact genetically more feed efficient and they just didn't happen to have a particularly good environment. So it is it is a project as a result of them being low heritability we need these very large training populations to really pull out that genetic signal and separate it from all the environmental noise. So they're not the easiest traits but they're the most valuable traits and that, that's why I think it's important to try to focus genomics on these hard to measure high value traits. Several times, Allison, you've mentioned the uh, environment. And if you look at the meat spectrum across the board, pork, poultry, and beef, uh, pork and poultry now have their animals in very ideal environments coast to coast. It doesn't matter whether they're in Florida, Montana, or Illinois, they're the same environment. Cattle, on the other hand, you have the tropics in Florida, you have the Montana winters, and, and all of that contributes to more variability in the end product and consequently maybe we haven't made the improvements in efficiency in beef as we have in pork and poultry. Are you seeing and saying that this might be able to take some of that environmental factor out where we can really look at those particular genetics within that given environment, whether that be tropical or very cold climates? Well, I think these particular traits are probably the ones that are pretty valuable irrespective of your climate whether you're in Florida or, or, or Nevada fertility is going to be a very important trait for you similarly with feed efficiency and similarly with disease resistance and so hopefully these would be traits that would be universally valuable to all of the different uh, segments of the beef industry and all of the wonderful variety of breeds that make up that industry to suit the different environments so who would have ever thought we'd be looking at genes in this way, right? Well, it's the bovine genome getting sequenced really has changed the, the game. And uh, I think what I'm excited to see is potentially delivering something of value to the industry from all of that research that delivered the three billion base pairs that make up the bovine genome. Oh, that's simple. We're, it's that simple. We've broken down three billion genome, genome base pairs to find a way to make a more consistent, more efficient product in the beef industry. Thank you, Allison. Thanks, Trent. I'm Trent Luce with this cattle call. Thanks for joining us.